One, two. Dude, what the fuck is that scratch on your nose? Were you fighting with your sister like a jerk? Were you a jerk? <laughs> you don't give a shit. You're like, yeah, I was a jerk, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're such a jerk. <laughs> Fucking hell, you know, sometimes you can be all the fucking courage you want all day long and then you're just in the crucial moment and he's like, ah, I could have fucking did that little extra, god damn it. I had a great fucking gig tonight, McKibbins. All the McKibbins gigs are just fucking so fun. I'm really enjoying coming back. It's like coming back home with the old staff that are still there, old managers. It's just a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Only thing is, I told myself as part of my content routine tonight I was gonna bring out the camera I was gonna bring out my nice Sony camera and take some footage of me doing at least a couple covers and at least one original amazing crowd there was a fucking bunch of cool tables making requests and they were into it and actually one of the tables requested original music I'm like oh when that happens if you're a musician you know that's a boon that's a total compliment that's a, like a show of respect like come on we want to hear your music let's go Tebow play it fucking sure enough I played it it was one of my best performances of one of my own songs I played before we go a bar song and a lot of the covers that I was playing people were into it it was maybe sort of the offbeat ones did Bailey Ray and Analik like some weird stuff tonight but it was it was fun because they were into it and people were clapping fucking hell sure enough and i didn't put on the goddamn camera i learned my lesson though i learned my lesson for next time it's just part of the content routine tebow get with the program do the work man sometimes there's not enough motivational videos in the world to fucking get you over that hump of making it a good day so i decided i'm gonna go and be around people I need to be around people, even if it's fucking perfect strangers, I don't care. Seeing their faces and seeing the way that they walk and look and talk to each other, it just sort of makes me feel like everyone's got their stuff, everyone's got their things that they gotta deal with, and it makes my whatever is going on in my head feel not so bad. So, trip to downtown Montreal, they'll pick me up, let's go! Now, if there's any one place that defines the city of Montreal. It's gotta be the mountain, Mount Royal, Mont Royal. Let's check out the mountain, it's fucking beautiful. I knew this was the right thing. How can you not get filled up with joy and great vibes when you come to a most beautiful place in town, surrounded by the sounds of kids laughing and people having fun? That shit's contagious. You can't come to the mountain unless you come to the lookout. Come on. Let's go there. What better way to represent your town by showing off things that can be noticed from high up above? Maybe not space. This one's not as big as the Great Wall, but it certainly is recognizable for lots of reasons. The amount of debt that it's incurred, but also the cool shape, the big O.
It's like a big ass fucking spaceship. I don't think I've ever seen any other building like it. It's a shame it's not used much anymore. It's like any of these Olympic places that have been built in cities around the world that were just for one purpose only and then basically not discarded, but just, you know, neglected or left to rot. It's a shame. It's a cool building. I had to come out on this drive today because I was feeling shitty this morning, even though I knew in my head I had no fucking good reason to feel shitty. I had a, a show the night before, uh, watched a bunch of Gary Vaynerchuk positive motivational shit this morning just to get me on the right frame of mind, and I still couldn't get rid of that fog. There was something going on. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with me? Jesus Christ. I mean, if that doesn't do it, what the hell, man? Like, you can't get happy with all of that. There's something going on inside. I'm like, fuck it, I'm going for a drive. And I'm glad I came to see my city. I knew that would work. I knew that that was an important thing for me to do this morning so I could see humanity, you know? And just get that grittiness of, of the city and feel like I'm not alone. I'm surrounded by a community, good, bad, and everything in between. And I'm part of it. I am I'm absolutely a part of it. I have a place. I belong here and I can contribute in some way. So why am I still unhappy? Becoming this entrepreneurial mindset, not to be the best entrepreneur in the world, just to be the best one that I can be and to make a living meager or otherwise just getting by doing shit that I'm fucking passionate about means taking responsibility for everything. If I'm unhappy, it's my fault. There's nobody else that's responsible for that. The stuff that I feel is unresolved, it's my problem to fix. It's nobody else's problem to fix. And it just seems some days when you feel like you've got, not the weight of the world, but you've got some responsibilities that are new because you've taken on that kind of willingness to work hard and do it every single day. You don't know on the good days or the bad days when your mind is just gonna start fucking reminding you, hey, let's deal with this. It's a big cleanup, it's a long cleanup. This, a day like this, might have fucking ruined me for a week in the past. Not to say that it's resolved, but I recognize it for what it is. I'm glad I came to visit downtown Montreal. Beautiful. I'm saying it to myself now so that I feel compelled to do it. Bringing my camera, gonna film T-Bow doing an original in a bar. Yes, God damn it, freaking do it. Don't be, don't be a pussy. Throw us out. God damn it, do it. Chill a life, they fade away It's all just dreaming anyway Yeah, you're touching, you're hoping that I'll stay it takes time when you're kickstarting a brand new thing. You gotta be willing to do the grind, but fuck man, it pays off. The karma comes, the fucking, all the fucking planets align. Things happen when you fucking stick with it. Stick with itness. It works, it fucking works. Let's go, rock and roll! This is my kind of morning. So peaceful. Just crunching in the snow. <laughs> Sibo. Clean driveway, fresh start. To make room for all those people that are not gonna come and visit me. <laughs> Hermit much? Maybe. Smart, Thibaut, go. Do physical activity and film yourself. Schwitzing, nice. So as I'm shoveling before and I'm thinking about open AI, I mean, I think about open AI a lot. These days, it's, it's on every feed, on every platform that I frequent. Personally, I'm thinking very specifically in terms of, you know, songwriting and like, how could I be a better singer-songwriter? I, so I ask it questions that are relevant to me. For instance, who are the most renowned songwriters of all time? So it gave me an answer. It says there are, you know, many renowned. It's sort of a uh, disclaimer always at the beginning of every answer. It's very subjective, you know, but here are the top five. And so not surprisingly, Bob Dylan, John Lennon, Paul Simon, Bruce Springsteen, and Leonard Cohen. And I'm like, I like that. So continuing with the conversation, say, 
who are the top 50? Based on overall contribution to the music world, serving as inspiration for other renowned singers, like, come on, let's go. And there's the list, the top 50, starting from Bob Dylan all the way down. Billie Eilish made the list. I mean, obviously today she is huge, but it's just very interesting the way that an AI has sort of parsed this list and said, here you go, Merle Haggard, Loretta Lynn, Dolly Parton, a lot of, you know, tip of the hat to all of the different genre of music. B.B. King, of course, Aretha Franklin, Sam Cooke, Otis Redding. Like, yes, yes, Chad GPT, you are correct. A last disclaimer at the end of the answer, and I love this. This is just a partial list, and it represents English language singer-songwriters. Absolutely correct. If you had an assistant, a person, a partner, a friend, a colleague sitting next to you, and they would be biased, no matter how incredible a person or a great human being that they were, they would have a bias. They would say, yeah, you know, I could give you the top five worldwide, but I really love blues, you know, Thibaut, so here's a couple that you should really look into. It would be a different list. And good point about English language only. What if you are from Spain? What if you're from Portugal? There are some incredible, incredible jazz like just masterminds that have made such a huge impact on music in general. But this is a great start. So it just says to me, how can I best use ChatGPT and OpenAI as a singer songwriter who covers artists that I respect and admire? And I'm also on a mission of discovery to find others. I mean, I remember when I first listened to, where's Prine? Prine is in here for sure. John Prine, listed by the AI as number 39. Whether that's you know an actual ranking or not, it's subjective. However, when I discovered John Prine for the first time, and Towns Van Zant as well, I'm like, these guys, where have they been my whole fucking life? There are some that are not on this list too that I know I have discovered and that are part of my personal list. It just goes on and on. And so this is a great tool. I mean, like, I just know exactly where I have to go. It's amazing what proper motivation will do, huh? So one of the first covers that I'm doing for my YouTube content is a Bob Dylan. So I've chosen uh, Knocking on Heaven's Door is the, the one that I'm gonna start with. I have a bunch on my song list that I can choose from. A little bit of pressure, you know? Like, you want, I, want to do, I want to do it justice, I want to do it well. I gotta always come back, get rid of the fucking imposter syndrome. Remember, this is my version. This is Tebow's interpretation. I find I don't talk enough about the good nights when I'm having really good nights and I just love crashing out here a little bit on the couch in the live room, you know, in my environment, in my studio, look at the drums, everything just like is here, you know, uh, at the ready. Uh, I love that feeling. It's very reassuring, confidence building sensation. And when I am crashed out here and I'm just, you know, surfing or I'm on TikTok or whatever, and a lot of uh, inspiring content comes up in my feed, there's a lot of great content out there that says, hey, if you know, tips and tricks on how to become better at video editing, here's how to do, 3D animations or how to make these incredible sort of effects and how to improve your B-roll and how to do sort of, you know, like, you know, motion capture, you know, just with like footage and I automatically start thinking, fuck man, that's a lot of shit. I look at that content and I recognize that my mind is going to a negative place to think, you're not good enough, you can't do this, you suck. And I stop it. You are good enough to edit your videos. You're good enough to fuck it, whatever. You don't have to be the best. I'm telling myself that so often. Like obviously I haven't been telling myself that enough in the 51 years, you know, that I've been on this planet. Repeat after me, I dare you. I am enough. I can do this. Was that so fucking hard? Watch out, time for drums.